Hello, this is FIS 30141 Electromagnetic Radiation for the 2020-2021 session. Uh, this is a third year course. This is video number one of that course. My name is Hugh Lowen here and I work here in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Manchester. I will be teaching you this course over the following 11 weeks. And in this first video, I will be giving you a little bit more information about the structure and content of the course. Just a little bit of bookkeeping. There are two quite similar labelled courses which you could do at third year, both of them core courses. The first one is Phys 30441 Electrodynamics, which is being taught by Terry Wyatt. If Please check that you have correctly registered uh, on either my course or on Terry's course and attend that material uh, uh, accordingly. Um, Terry's course focuses more on theoretical aspects of this field. Uh, my course focuses more on practical aspects. This course, Phys 30141, um, is basically all classical physics. We will find over the coming weeks that the ideas of classical physics as they apply to the uh, motion and propagation of radiation and charges, um, the ideas of classical physics are more than adequate to describe um, this rich field of physics, apart from a few uh, areas where quantum physics rears its ugly head, and, and I will talk about those uh, um, when the time arises. I will stress a lot during the course of this module uh, the importance of numerical calculations. So have your calculator ready, follow along with the examples which I give through the notes and in the lectures, um, um, you will be expected to be able to replicate some of the numerical estimates of the phenomena with which we deal. Now this year we are doing a blended learning module for this course and that means there will be around three videos per week. There are a couple of extra introductory videos this week as I'm sure you've already seen. These three videos will each be around 20 minutes of pen and paper style um, uh, material where I will show how uh, pictures um, and carefully drawn diagrams can lead to a great deal of insight about this rich area of physics. So if you were dismayed by seeing this first uh, video with PowerPoint slides, do not fear. Uh, this will likely be the only lecture with PowerPoint slides, except perhaps for the final one. As well as those three videos, I will hold one teach-in per week on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. via the Blackboard course module site, uh, at which uh, I will go through some of the, uh, the derivations and examples and at which you can ask questions. I will also hold one office hour per week on Mondays at two o'clock, where if you wish you can come in for one-to-one -one, uh, discussions uh, or in small groups to raise any other questions you may have about the previous week's material. All materials will go onto Blackboard. This includes all the notes, all the note summaries, the example sheets which will be issued and the answers to them. This is really a notes-based course. Summary sheets will be made available to help you, but I recommend that you also make your own. And you should also use the discussion group for the module. Um, these discussion groups are of course available for all the modules this year. Um, and I will endeavor to engage with the questions you raise, uh, but please also feel free to discuss amongst yourselves. And I will deal with any questions or points which uh, the class as a whole uh, re uh, start discussing and, and feel are important to pursue. Now the course aims are already laid out on the module website and the course notes reflect these six um, key ideas. But there is a unifying idea um, uh, that links all of these, which is, uh, which is the principle of using Maxwell's equations to describe the motion of electromagnetic waves. We will also look at how accelerated charges produce that electromagnetic radiation and how it propagates in different media, such as dielectrics, conductors, and plasmas. A key technological application of electromagnetic radiation is in guided radiation, by which we principally mean transmission lines and waveguides, and in section five, I will describe this very important area of applied physics. Finally, an, an area close to my heart is the electromagnetic radiation 
uh, which is created by various charged sources. We will see that charges produce radiation, and in section six we will go in some detail into the phenomena of synchrotron radiation, bremsstrahlung, and um, um, Compton scattering and Cherenkov radiation. Now, this is a core classical topic in physics, which is well established, so therefore the material is not going to change from year to year very greatly. So therefore this module will be similar in content to previous year's courses. And that means, of course, the examination topics will also be consistent with previous years. And the course notes and the example sheets will give you a good guide to what to expect um, in the assessments. This is the fifth year I have taught this course, and hopefully that will give you uh, some guidance as well. The example sheets and solutions will be made available during the, uh, the, um, the duration of the course. And the experience of previous years indicates that attendance and engagement with the lectures and the example sheets correlates very strongly with the attained marks at the assessment at the end of the year. So you may be wondering what recommended texts to refer to. Uh, these are listed on the course module website as well. Uh, George McAfee is one of my favorites. That's the one on the top left. And um, th some of the derivations in that book are used in the course notes. You should already be very familiar with Grant and Phillips, which is a core uh, Manchester series book, which is used throughout our degree program. And as well as that, there is Electromagnetic Radiation, another Manchester series book by Frank Reed, which goes into the, uh, some of the aspects of this course in a little more detail. Two other books which will give you a different flavour of the material are Glenn Smith and Lorraine Corson and Lorraine. Um, and again, some of the derivations uh, in Lorraine, Corson and Lorraine are reflected in the course notes. Finally, we have uh, Jackson. So every topic area of physics typically has a core uh, volume, which is meant to be the, the key reference, and this is that book. It's very large, it's very thick, and uh, not recommended for your first pass through this material, but I mention it here because if you go on later, to work in this area of physics or to study it more, this is the key text that you should refer to. Now the syllabus is divided into six sections, six units, which are reflected closely in the uh, lecture notes, which are already on the course module website. But again, the, the key idea here is that there are a couple of linking ideas, one of which is the Larmor formula, which connect um, many of the concepts that we will discuss. So the Larmor formula is a key thing that you should pay attention to during the course of this module. Um, as I said, the sections are divided uh, into six pieces. Uh, sections three and four deal with radiation in matter and reflection and refraction uh, from boundaries in those materials. Um, and I also deal with scattering Another key idea here is the relationship between radiation from an acceleration of a charge and scattering. We will see that they are very, very similar phenomena und uh, underneath the, uh, the hood. Guided radiation I already mentioned, um, which is a key techn technology area, uh, but is also interesting from a conceptual point of view. And finally, we will deal with uh, other sources of radiation, which is also quite um, important technologically. So for the remainder of these, uh, this video, I will show you a few, um, a few examples uh, to sort of whet your appetite uh, so you can get, um, have an appreciation for where this area of physics is applied uh, in the outside world. So you may have heard of the Diamond Light Source, which is in Oxfordshire, near to um, Oxford, in, uh, on the Harwell Science site. Uh, this is presently the largest particle accelerator in the United Kingdom uh, and is also the largest scientific facility in the United Kingdom. It was built around 15 years ago. Uh, you can see it here. You can see, if you look closely, cars, which give you a sense of the scale. It's something like 500 meters in circumference inside, so the building is rather larger than that. And this is the brightest source of X-rays uh, in, uh, in Europe. Um, and synchrotron radiation, which is the process by which those X-rays are made, 
is one of the ways of producing the brightest artificial sources of light. So in section six, we will describe the principles that underlie this. But the idea is that electrons, charged particles, are accelerated in some manner, here by using magnetic fields, and are, give, are stimulated to release photons. Now on the left, we will deal with the basic idea of synchrotron radiation through a single dipole magnet, but I should mention that uh, as well as these simpler ideas, there are more complex devices, so-called insertion devices, such as uh, undulators, which can produce uh, more tailored forms of radiation. So again, uh, you can use this course as a springboard to understanding these more exotic and interesting devices. Um, as another example, um, at the bottom you can see um, some scientists holding a section of waveguide. And this waveguide, if you look closely, is a, is a rectangular metal box through which electromagnetic radiation can be confined and guided. In this particular example, this radiation is, is guided so that it can be used to accelerate the charged particles in the particle accelerator that we've just examined in the previous slide. But waveguides are also very, very widely used in telecommunications, in television, and in other areas where high frequency radiation has to be either transmitted or received. An extension of this basic idea where we shape the interior of the waveguide is the idea of the accelerating cavity. So on the top right and on the top left and the bottom right are a few photographs of where these of, of the of how these cavities uh, might appear. So the top right shows a cross section through them, and charged particles uh, pass through these cavities and experience electric fields from the guided radiation within them. Uh, and these cavities are the basis of all particle accelerators. So all the particle physics experiments that you've ever heard of um, use these sorts of cavities and use particle accelerators similar to the uh, ones we saw in the previous picture as a means to collide particles together to do things like particle and nuclear physics. So understanding the, both the way in which these charged particles emit radiation and how that radiation can be guided and then act back on those charges to accelerate them are key areas both of science and of many practical applications. So we will go through that as we, uh, as we deal with each of these module sections in turn, but hopefully this will, will, uh, will get your interest going uh, as we go through some of that uh, more uh, detailed material in the coming weeks. Now, just to remind you, we of course will be dealing with two basic core ideas. Firstly, Maxwell's equations here, given in their differential form, and we'll look at this a little bit more closely. But if you're a little bit rusty from last year, I encourage you to remind yourself of the form uh, of Maxwell's equations, both in their differential form given here and in their integral form. And we'll also be using uh, their uh, counterparts when there is a medium present. So we will be expressing Maxwell's equations bothly, both in terms of uh, the in vacuum form and when there is a, uh, either a dielectric constant or some form of permeability in some form of material. And again, we'll come back to that in more detail later. Finally, a key idea uh, when we think about the motion of charges and the radiation they may produce is the coupling together of a charge and an electromagnetic field. The key idea here is the Lorentz force given at the top. So with the Lorentz force, you should remind yourself, um, you will have known about this for, for some years, I hope. Um, we will be looking at this and Maxwell's equations, and these are the, the two basic ideas from which we can generate uh, an understanding of many physical phenomena. So in the next video, I will be looking at uh, the fields around a charge and we'll start to look in more detail about how the motion and acceleration of a charge can give rise to radiation.